Time for some more speed running hot takes from Turkey. Unskippable cutscenes are a nice break slash breather and make speed games more fun as long as they don't drag on. Usually what you have in games is either you can skip every cutscene or you can skip no cutscenes. And when you can skip no cutscenes, holy shit does that suck. What was that samurai game that came out that was kind of Dark Souls-esque and it was just dead on arrival for speedruns because you couldn't skip any of the cutscenes? Goes to Tsushima. Did they ever patch in cutscene skips? No? What I'm saying is, sure, you can look at the silver line that gives you a nice break slash breather, but I don't think that advantage is good enough to offset how annoying it is to waste like an additional 20 minutes of your life or whatever with <laughs> watching cutscenes you've seen a million times. Yeah, I disagree with this wholeheartedly. Although they did clarify here as long as they don't drag on. I mean, sure, if your game has like one or two cutscenes, sure, but how often does that happen? And certainly the existence of cutscenes inspires people to create cutscene skips and those strategies can often be kind of cool. But again, we're searching for silver linings in something that is generally pretty bad, which is unskippable cutscenes. Dawn says, shorter speedruns are usually more entertaining. It depends what you mean by short. It's all relative, right? I do think at some point, it becomes so long that it's just like no one has time to watch them and you can't possibly just jump into a stream and watch a whole run. But certainly if you're watching speedruns, then you've got to have the expectation that you're not going to see a full run anyway because there's going to be a lot of resets. But I do think shorter speedruns are easier for a viewer to fully like grasp all the intricacies and follow and be able to actually watch in one sitting. Thinking of all the speedruns that I had an interest in, Super Mario Sunshine. Most people don't know that the very first game I ever tried to speedrun was Super Mario Sunshine. I did it! I f***ing did it! Dark Souls, Super Mario 64, these kind of runs, all of them were like around an hour or two. The run I ended up doing, which was five, six hours, like GT5 has never been the most popular speed run. That is probably in a large part why, the length. While it's possible for longer speed runs to be entertaining, I do agree with this generally, that a tight one to two hour run or less is likely more enjoyable to watch than something that takes six hours. But this is like a general trend, obviously. There are many short speed runs that are boring as fuck and long ones that have a lot of cool tricks in them. But there are things that can be too short and things that are can be too long. I agree in general. Not gonna lie, your classic percent run on YouTube was the one that introduced me to GT5 speed runs. My classic percent PB and my 10 hour 100% speed run of GT5 is one of my most viewed videos of all time. This run may have 4.3 million views, but when it comes to the engagement graph, only 20% get past six minutes and only about 5% have watched the entire thing. There's still a lot of people to watch a 10 hour run, but I guarantee you on runs that are about an hour, you probably got more than 5% getting through the whole thing. Shock and Aubrey says, if you don't have at least one completed run for a category or at least the game, then you shouldn't get a say in rules, changes, decisions for that category. As a rule, the people who actually run a category should have the most say in how that category is set out in regards to its rules. I can't disagree with that. I have been involved as a moderator in GTA 5 when rules decisions have come up for categories and I'm just like, look, I, I will largely vote with a consensus or just abstain because I don't run that category. It has nothing to do with me. I can advise, give advice. I can, I can give suggestions what I think is appropriate, but I would never you know, stick my nose in and be like, I know what's best when I don't run the thing. Th this seems to be sensible to me because obviously the people who run it are the people who know the most how it should be laid out and of course the ones most affected. I agree. King J says, for the most part, any percent are the most boring categories, both to run and watch, especially 3D Mario's. Really? Like the any percent categories are the most popular for a reason. Runners gravitate towards any percent in general because they're the most easily accessible and enjoyable to play. They're not overwhelming. Certainly GT5 is in a way an exception to the rule because we don't, the 8 percent category is complete garbage and no one really likes to run it. And we do have a classic percent that's the most popular, which even then is a type of any percent, but it's a condition to any percent. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a hot take I, I don't agree with. No. Although he did say, look at it, Super Mario 64. What's the most popular category? 70 star. It's not zero star, one star, 16 star, 70 star. I mean, although I think at one point 70 star was any percent, right? Any percent runs that skip so much of the game or just glitch heavy nonsense can be boring. Yeah, I mean, maybe he's not that wrong thinking about it. I guess it just depends on the game. The Hollow MC says, the leaderboard and the community should be moderated separately. 
There's no good reason to ban someone who's an arsehole, but is still a valid runner. Leaderboard bans should be for cheaters only. Honestly, I agree with this. The leaderboards is meant to be something that keeps a record of who's the best runner, not who is the best person. I'm not saying there's no reason that a person should ever be banned from the leaderboards other than cheating. It's just hard to think of what circumstances that could bring that forth. Like obviously cheaters should be banned from the leaderboards, that goes without saying, but like take Rydog for example, person who is banned from the GT5 Discord for causing endless amounts of trouble, who lied to the spew1.com, the site moderators, to get all the moderators for GT5 kicked off. They were never banned from the leaderboards. They deleted all of their runs uh, in a hissy fit. I think they eventually tried to resubmit their run, but we just didn't accept it because they just deleted all their runs. So I'm like, fuck it. I can't think of anyone who was banned from our leaderboards who wasn't banned for cheating. Unless you count Rydog. I think there have been cases in the past, though, of people who've been found to be, like, pedophiles or vicious racists or some shit. And I think, I think there might have been cases where they were removed from the leaderboards. I have not been in such a situation before, and I imagine that'd be a very uncomfortable decision to have to make. People who are truly reprehensible or, or live to harm others or what, what have you, uh, what you would do in those cir circumstances. But, I mean, you'd, you'd think that, like, if you didn't want their name to be on the leaderboard or something, you'd just make it, like, anonymous and leave the time or some shit. But even then, like, I, it's not like the leaderboard particularly promotes people necessarily or something. I don't know, man. Looking at what this person's saying, though, I don't think there's ever been a person who's been banned from the leaderboard for being an asshole. It's usually difficult circumstances of people being found to have committed gravest acts against other people or, or what have you, you know? Chronic says, Rainbow Mises are some of the most boring speedrunning adjacent content to watch on Twitch. The novelty is over after the first few times at most. I'm going to be real with you. I kind of agree with this. Everything is just colossally screwed up in a lot of Rainbow Mises. Like, compare my one randomizer playthrough to Chaos. The one time was funny because you watch the cutscenes has different characters and stuff. But after that, it was just like, eh. That, the door is already open of... Okay. <laughs> it's a toy car! Chaos, though, done many different seasons. The, the chaos that affects the gameplay, adding new things, is more interesting than just jumbling up what already exists. Rainbow Miser, in some limited capacity in GTA 5, plus chaos was way better, just getting myself different vehicles and stuff. It was a headache after the first few streams. I did actually hear that from quite a few people, that they just didn't like any aspect of the Rainbow Miser. Stop saying Rainbow Miser. Sorry, Randomizer, but it's called Rainbow Miser for GTA 5. I don't know why they call it that, but that is the correct name. Chaos is just way better than randomizers. But I do think they're fun to exist and everyone should play them like at least once and like I'll have one playthrough of their favorite game with them. I just don't think they have a lot of value over and over again. The novelty wears off, but it is fun initially. Cap here says, I like long speed runs, but too many people think that because a category is longer, it doesn't need to be taken as seriously. Long runs can still be intensely competitive and optimized. It takes so long for a long category to get intensely competitive and optimized. There has to be a lot of people running it. And it takes so long to get through runs. Like when you have a short run, the odds of some run killing thing happening is obviously going to be far less than a really long run. You know, something you just literally can't recover from. And then you're sitting there like, well, I can't get world record. I can't get PB. Am I really going to spend the next four hours doing a run rather than just quitting? Like you might do that if the run is an hour and you've got like 20% left to go. But if you're doing a 10 hour speed run and you've got 20% left to go, that's like two hours. You're like, fuck that shit. And because of that, you don't get as good as the late at the late game uh, as readily. And there's just not as many people who are interested in running long categories. Like people not taking it seriously isn't because people don't like or want to take seriously long categories. It's just because they they don't become as competitive and optimized as easily as short events, you know? From LEC, speedrunning has an ableism problem that they just don't want to admit. In what way? In that it's not accessible to people who are differently abled? I guess that's not really surprising. I don't think it's a large enough thing that you can have like separate leaderboards for people with particular disabilities or some such. Certainly these days, controllers and stuff are continually being announced that um, are meant to make it easier for people with uh, like say hand issues to play. I know PlayStation just released one, but that's not something that I think speedrunners can resolve. There's just not enough people who speedrun that fit into such categories. Like if you've got a speedrun with like 10 people or something, what are you gonna have a whole separate leaderboard for potentially one person? 
I would imagine that if a person who was differently able had an interest in a particular speedrun, speedrunners, I think, are pretty accepting and would put forth some effort, at least, to make them feel welcome. I've never heard of a situation where people are just outright dismissed or rejected because they uh, are not like everyone else or something. Z says, why do we suddenly hate long speedruns? Back in the day, 14 hour runs were hypes. Imagine clowning someone for completing a marathon instead of congratulating their training slash endurance. The only negative things I hear about long speedruns is the worries of people's health and stuff. That kind of stuff shouldn't be normalized. But as we've talked about before, if people want to do it, sometimes that's, that's fine as far as I'm concerned. Like, like, you do you kind of thing. Especially if people have breaks in the middle. But have 14 hour runs ever been hype? Outside of, say, Final Fantasy? People, for the longest time, have been dismissive of like any run that's over like two hours. Like, you tell someone that GT5 takes six hours to complete, and they're like, is that really a speed run though? I mean, like, really a six hour speed run? The legitimacy of long runs is something that's always been questioned, you know? I, I don't think it's sudden hate for long speedruns. Even actual, like, other speedrunners, like, actual speedrunners will be were dismissive of long runs. Even though you're like, look, the game normally takes, like, 60 hours to do. I'm doing it in six hours. Like, that's 10%. They're like, yeah, but, like, it's still six hours. Jack says, I agree with most that the speedrun community is way more positive and welcoming than 99% of internet communities, but I think some people blind themselves to how gatekeepy and elitist some areas of it can be. I think that's just the nature of you know, you having a community. Like, communities will always be somewhat gatekeepy in the sense that they will have expectations of people who want to join, or people in the group will have expectations of each other in terms of their knowledge or how they act and stuff that new people won't necessarily immediately pick up. And obviously, the elitism would naturally, naturally come from, like, passion and having a high opinion of what you do. Like, obviously, you can go kind of too far with that. You can get, become self-aggrandizing or whatever. But like, I, I think some aspect of that is just to be expected in any internet community. And I don't think we're blind to it. It's just there's nothing you can really do about it. It will just naturally happen. And you try to limit it as much as you can. And certainly some people are more like this than others. And you just got to be like, hey, stop. <laughs> now that I have your attention, hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you. I wish you all the best.